Hi, I'm Robert Gibson. I'm Ricky Morton. We're the Rock and Roll Express. And you're watching WGS TV. Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and Zephx TV. I'm the Russell Gamer, Double People and Boucho. This is gonna be the Monday night raw review for the week of June twenty-third, two thousand and fourteen. Um, let me go ahead and introduce the panel. Um, as uh, one of them is re-signing onto the internet right now, but uh, while we wait for that person, ladies and gentlemen, he is our resident music mogul from YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV. He is the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how you doing? Well, Billy, I am completely appalled at, at how dirty Raw got last night. <laughs> and we will you. tell you about that, and we will tell you about that later in the review. Oh, definitely, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and, of course, the king of the Divas division is also here. Ladies and gentlemen, James from the Big Easy. James, how are you doing? I'm going to say this. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> and that's coming from a ref. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? Well, let's go ahead and uh, start off the review. Um, Stephanie McMahon calling out Vicky Guerrero, saying, "You know, you know, you deserve to be fired for what happened last week. I blame you." But then she gives Vicky Guerrero a, uh, an option of either quitting or, you know, keeping her job, provided that she would win her match later on in the evening against Stephanie McMahon. And the crowd really, I would think, Lance kind of jumped on Vicky's bandwagon when she started mentioning the Guerrero family name. True, but then again, 90% of them knew she was going. It's been a well-known fact that she's probably going to be Vicky's last draw. So it's pretty much out of respect for Eddie. Pretty much, yeah. I, I got to agree with you on that one there. Um, but first off, apparently we were going to have a uh, preview of the Tag Team Championship match for the Money in the Bank and a pair of singles matches. First off, Jimmy Uso taking on Luke Harper. Was that an organ or harmonica version of he's got the whole world in his hands, James? Yeah, that's the weirdest, freakiest theme I have ever heard in my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can I, think of one weirder. Psycho Sis was weirder. Just the psycho entrance. Yeah, it, it, but it fit. This one is like, huh? Their uh, head uh, music guy could have done better. Jim Jim Johnson. Yeah, he could have done better. But at the same time, it could have been they could have made uh, CFO been doing that because you know how with CFO they've been doing a lot of the NXT people's team nowadays. So basically, they could be the one who have done that in like. Well, well, for all we know, um, what they did on uh, Monday Night Raw could have been like a trial version of it. Maybe they'll do some like updates to it as well, uh, you know, as it's. You know, as they go along, but you know, the last time we had people of a faction having separate music from the main guy, you know, Hogan did it in the NWO. There was like the the jobber faction, uh, you know, mid card level of the NWO. So, uh, it it was kind of unique to see Luke Harper and Eric Rowan have separate music from Bray Wyatt. You know, even though they're all part of the same faction in the Wyatt family. Um, as far as this match goes, it was Harper. It is a very quick match, to be uh, rather honest. Uh, Luke Harper with the discus clothesline gets the win on Jimmy Uso, and then we go to Jay Uso and Eric Rowan, which took a, a little bit more time than it did for Jimmy and uh, Luke Harper, but it was still um, a, a somewhat decent match. Jay Uso getting the victory with the top rope splash, so they pretty much split that, you know, for the go home show to for. Uh, Needs Money in the bank. Usually, you can tell, you know, if someone goes over on the uh, the go home show, that ten, nine times out of ten they would not be going over on the pay per view. WWE and Lance kind of uh, throwing a little monkey wrench into that plan by having them split. Yeah, it's you. You think you know, but you have no idea. 
Somebody's got yep, to that's it. pretty much the way it How went. So, working? it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. Um, they also showed a little backstage, uh, a little video segment of uh, Rusev and Lana sightseeing in the nation's capital and, of course, at the exact same time uh, trying to put over Vladimir Putin and the almighty powerful nation of Russia. I'm going to leave that at that. Uh, <coughs> because we still, still have absolutely no idea what... So what is Rusev supposed to be? You know, this era's Nikolai Volkov, basically. Volkov, <laughs> um, whatever you want to call him. Uh, we have uh, Alicia Fox taking on Naomi with Paige and Cameron on a commentary. Um, I, I will say this, James. Paige sounded really good on on the commentary, but from the way they're they're playing it up right now, I'm I'm just. WWE teasing a split up of the Funkadactyls. Would you would you agree with that assessment, James? I mean, this thing's been going on since really main event, and I feel like really, yeah, this is what basically they're gonna go with the split up of the Funkadactyls. I mean, I feel like um, you know, Naomi's been being held back because her being part of the Funkadactyls. She's a good competitor. She's a great competitor, especially in like NXT and even right before it and Florida Championship Wrestling, when she was the first. I think was the she was, I think the first Divas Champion in FCW. I have to uh, double check that. Um, but she's a great competitor. Uh, Cameron, on the other hand, concerning the fact that I think she said her favorite match of all time was like a little. Putting it like uh, Melina and Melina Alicia Fox. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Naomi gets the win with a variation of the final cut maneuver and uh, picks up the victory. And we do find out later in the evening that um, it has been booked for Money in the Bank page to defend the Divas Championship against <laughs> Naomi. Kind of a weird looking picture. They had Naomi with. Green lipstick. Uh, um, that, that's basically their promotional picture from like a while back. But yeah, that's. But as I said, I, I agree. I agree with this match. I was really afraid that was gonna go with Cameron versus Paige, but I'm kind of got to agree because as I said, Paige is a good wrestler. And you know, he's a good wrestler. Let them fight. Yeah, it's very possible they could be saving that for the split up of the Funkadactyls from the way they're going. Um, I don't know if they necessarily need to use a Divas Championship to split the two up. Um, I, mean, I, I wouldn't agree with it. I, can't, I, I wouldn't agree with it neither, but at the same time, I feel like the Divas Division on, is on emergency plan B. The fact that a, we don't know if the rumors are true that AJ is pregnant. If she is pregnant, they are very emergency plan B, basically. Well, they got a lot. From what I've heard, they got a lot of great talent, of female talent in NXT. I wouldn't see any problem with them calling them up. You know, there's uh, like Sasha Banks. She's in the NXT. Uh, Charlotte is a good one too. She's the NXT Women's Champion. They're they're good ones. But just think about this. Basically, you see how Daniel Bryan is the, is the top person. AJ is that same level with being the top person in the division. Once they don't have that top person in the, uh, on the roster due to injury or marriage or you know pregnant, then they have to go to an emergency backup. And I, I feel like with this division, they don't have an emergency backup. I don't like that little gesture you made when you were referring to pregnant, man. That looked kind of weird. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. Well, let's move on from that and go to yes, ladies and gentlemen. It is once a once again time to bully. No. <laughs> when you bully, you can do anything. And the inspirational Bo Dallas did it again. Hit the running Bulldog on Titus O'Neil, gets the victory, and tried to kind of do his little comfort thing to Titus O'Neil with the bow leave. And it looked like Titus had, uh, had slapped the microphone out of his hand. I, I love how he, uh, Lance, how he played off of that and saying, Oops, you know, sorry, you know, you know me, Butterfingers. I, I like that. I thought that was actually kind of funny. Yeah, he's starting to grow on me. Oh, my God. How do you spell Jobber? J uh, T I T U S. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> How do you spell Bo Lever? J A M E S. 
It's L A N C E. Well, officially, Bo Dallas is what they call Nine and Bo. But um, up next, Brock Lesnar to break a streak. <laughs> well, up next, of course, we're going to have the official announcement as to who is going to be in the Money in the Bank contract match, the the um, official Money in the Bank contract match. Uh, of course, we already knew, knew of Seth Rollins' placement into it. And next, we got Kofi Kingston, Zack Swagger, Dolph Ziggler, Rob Van Dam, and the Intercontinental Champion. Flashlight was broken. Was it you? He was Barrett at no, that time. That Those names at that time. What was your reactions to uh, these names being in the original Money in the Bank contract match? With the third degree, I didn't break any flashlight. Huh? Lance. Oh. Uh. Well, most of them. Eh, cool for uh, Ziggler. Uh. Van Dam. How can you not? I mean, this is going to be pretty much the attraction of the two uh, Money in the Bank matches because you got the the guys who are, do a lot of high flying spots. Some broken equipment too. While in yeah. the uh, while in the traditional, especially Kofi Kingston, especially Kofi Kingston, Kofi Kingston, Van Dam, uh, he made a career of them, and then you got uh, Ziggler. It's going to be because the uh, World Heavyweight one is going to be a, a brawl, more likely. And considering the name and the talents that we had in there, um, Triple H brought out Seth Rollins uh, saying that you know if he had um, a person to pick who would win the Money in the Bank contract match, it would be him, and which brought out Rob Van Dam, and they kind of have a little exchange on the microphone, which led to a matchup between the two. I can't see Lily talk about you without thinking it's the next thing she's going to say. You don't have to tell everyone, but think about who you... Very, very good man. Frog Splash, he missed it. Rollins then um, hits the curb stomp when Dean Ambrose shows up from the crowd and starts beating the heck out of Seth Rollins. Rollins managed to get the heck out of Dodge before anything else happened, which lead, led to a promo backstage. Rollins actually begging... So Triple H to put Dean Ambrose, who already sat on the microphone after that thing was over, and I, I'm going to Money in the Bank regardless if I'm in the, the match or not. Which to me kind of, uh, I don't, I wouldn't agree with that at, at, for some reason because of the fact that Ambrose just kind of spoiled what was going to happen next, and that was Rollins getting Triple H to put Ambrose into the match. I don't necessarily agree with the way that, you know they played that out. Um, now I can understand, you know, maybe you could have said something like, "I'm I'm going to show up the month to the Money in the Bank to spoil your match," you know, without having uh, James, in my opinion, without having to say, regardless if I'm in the match or not. Well, the thing is, I kind of agree with you, Billy, but at the same time, you kind of have to realize that, you know. We, I kind of knew he was going to be in a match no matter what. Because if you have Seth Rollins in the match, they're going to have to have Dean Ambrose. Because those two are basically feuding each other right now. So you, they go, they, I knew that he was going to be in that match. I kind of understand what you're going with that, but as I said, I already knew he was going to be in it. Wouldn't it kind of be kind of weird if they had, like, the Roman, I'm sorry, if they would have had Seth Rollins or Dean Ambrose win the Money in the Bank contract match and Roman Reigns wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match? Yeah, that, that that's going to be that'd be weird, but it'd be, uh, be, it'd be better if Seth Rollins gets the contract and Roman Reigns. That's going to be a good one. Yeah, because yeah. they can actually play off the, uh, the break of the shield as part of the angle to... to to build up for their match, you know, if uh, they ever go that route. Um, up next, the Intercontinental Championship on the line. Bad News Barrett, who's done wonders with that championship, to be honest, rather uh, frank, guys, because you know, ever since he started the Bad News Barrett gimmick and they put the championship on him, I mean, this guy has just gained 
loads and loads of popularity, even though they're still play, passing him off as a heel. Whenever he does, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. The fans always sing along with that, if you kind of get what I'm yeah, saying. And, and they're, re they're really into the gimmick. And he was defending the title against Dolph Ziggler, who had a victory on Friday Night SmackDown against the Intercontinental Champion in a non-title match. A very, very good match. I was very thoroughly entertained with what they did uh, in this match. Uh, but, of course, it came down to Ziggler charging to do a, a splash in the corner and Barrett countering with the bull hammer elbow, knocking out the show off. And bad news, Barrett retains the Intercontinental Championship. But, Lance, i got to say, if there was ever a candidate for best match of the night, it's got to be right here with Barrett and Ziggler. Oh, most definitely. It was an awesome match, and th I, this sort of backs up something I have said time and time again. Uh, Dolph Ziggler could sell a book to Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> He's that good at selling. Oh, man. Or you could sell a CD to Beethoven. Uh, I wonder how many of you guys get that reference. Um, but up next, of course, Vicky Guerrero's job on the line. I gotta say, kudos to the WWE because they allowed her to to go to the ring with Los Guerreros music. You know, we lie, we cheat, we steal. I, I gotta say, that's gotta be a in, in my mind uh, right there. Just right there, based on that, James. That's gotta be a, a tribute not only to Eddie Guerrero but the Guerrero family name in the WWE. Exactly, really, is that, you know, technically Vicky is the last Guerrero in the WWE. As you know, um, her daughter is not in the developmental anymore because they released her in April. So basically, and, you know, yeah, yeah she's a Guerrero. In fact, that is like her, her, you know, her being there as a character since her death. No, since, uh, since Eddie's death. I'm sorry. But since Eddie's death, she she's been a prominent character in WWE as like that heel general manager. They, uh, it just gives you respect that you know they, at least they're recognizing that she is the widow of Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, we, well, they also made references to it in uh, the promo that they did at the uh, the onset of the show with Stephanie and Vicky. Now, of course, none of, I don't think anybody realized that they were gonna have the at match end in mud. Whatever. Yes, Stephanie McMahon making the uh, the stipulation that the only way to win the match is to throw your opponent into a pool of mud that was there by the staging area. And, of course, she sent down Layla. I, I got to feel bad for Rosa Mendez. I mean, she's hot. She's sexy. She was co used to come out with Primo and Epico, you know, and did a great dance. You know, she was in limelight, and now what is she doing? She is in basically one spot on TV and it gets thrown in mud. Uh, now, I'm not necessarily uh, uh, Hold on, she, she's gonna be she's gonna be on Total Divas next season, so they gotta give her a better later on. Well, yeah, that well, that goes to my point. You know, they're putting her on a show that I basically couldn't give two craps about. Uh, Total Divas. Um, if I wanted to see uh, Total Divas, I would watch Monday Night Raw or Friday Night SmackDown. I would not watch an entire program dedicated to it. But uh. Anyway, Vicky Guerrero ends up. It was Layla, it was Rosa Mendez, and it was Alicia Fox. Fox. And all three of them end up going in the mud, courtesy of Vicky Guerrero. Stephanie McMahon then uh, ends up kneeing Vicky in the back, which sends Vicky into the mud, and therefore Vicky Guerrero lost, and she's fired. And so she basically had nothing to lose while Stephanie was taunting her with the na na, hey, hey, goodbye. Um, well, Vicky felt it was time for Stephanie McMahon to take a bath in the mud. Dad said there was something about you. Uh, I, would it be wrong to see Lance if uh, Triple H was turned on by that? <laughs> well, uh, he is the game. Uh, and he likes to play dirty. Because uh. <laughs> he's that damn good. Uh. Well, last week on Monday Night Raw, guys, we saw the debut of Goldust's new tag team partner and Stardust. And, well, we got a glimpse of them backstage, and all we can say is, when you wish upon a star. Watch, and, watch Disney sue for gimmick infringement. 
<laughs> now that's copyright infringement. Say they. Then of course Goldust then goes on to say, "I'm the normal one now." <laughs> <laughs> then of course he go it goes up to the uh, the interviewer and goes, <laughs> "That's typical Goldust does." But uh. I thought it was a little interesting to see, you know, you know, just how they were gonna play off the Stardust character. You know, we, we, you know, we got to see him in the ring last week. You know, with, with his whole, uh, you know, impersonation of AJ Styles with the whole thing with his hands. Um, you know, it, it was definitely interesting to see that, and then we need to see how he, they would personify the character. You know, how would they, how would they pull him off? You know, in a segment. You know, in a promo. And I, I gotta say. He did a pretty good job, in my opinion, Lance. Yeah, I just, I had a, just, this just came to me. It would be hilarious. Somebody shock, somebody uh, shock uh, Goldust with a taser, and we can have Tourette's Goldust and Stardust in the same promo. That's yeah, I, I that's uh. That, that's and if you don't know what we're talking about, YouTube, go look in Goldust with Tourette's. You'll laugh your head off. Especially with him and the late great test and uh, Stacy Keebler. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, following that, we had we, we had Jack Swagger taking on Kofi Kingston. I guess a preview of the Money in the Bank contract match with these two. Um, uh, very, very kind of fast-paced match, uh, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of good spots between Kingston and Swagger, but Swagger locking on the Patriot lock to uh, force Kofi to tap out. But, um, Swagger picks up the win, and following that, ladies and gentlemen, the Damien Sandow identity crisis continues. <laughs> we've had Lance Stevenson. We've had him thinking he was an interpretive dancer. We had him. I don't know what he was in the Battle Royal. Uh, he was LeBron like, James. He was LeBron James in the Battle Royal, and this week, since Monday Night Raw was in Washington D.C., he was Honest Abe. But I do like what Sandow got on the microphone and said, uh, "You know, you people thought I wasn't entertaining. Well, how do you like me now?" I don't know how I like it now, but but, but here's the thing, though. He's making us talk about it. And I think that's the bottom line. When we're talking about it, then they mu must be doing something right. But, uh, of course, they had him going against Big E, and Big E just completely decimated Sandow and got the big ending. But uh, the Big E gets on the microphone and uh, says, uh, you know, he's had enough of what Rusev and Lana were doing. Lana comes out basically providing a distraction so Rusev could sneak attack Big E and, and lock him in the accolade. So when we thought, uh, James, that this... This rivalry between Big E and Rusev was over. I think they've really just begun. No, I kind of, I kind of knew that was going to continue on that feud. I mean, yeah, that payback match was a bore, and like they had like their little hints and uh, hints uh, on a couple of like Ross and Smack that they did with good feud again. So uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, they they, they got to figure out something to do with Rusev. I mean. Really, the only person they could feud him now pr properly right now would have to be Big E. And uh, I, will, I will say this, though. I like how they did it with Big E. Because uh, Big E was kind of turning into Jesse Jackson yes. uh, during the promo. Yes. I love that. Yes. I, I love that. You know, um, I, I, I can't do a proper Jesse Jackson, so I'm not even going to try. But, uh, you know, with... Uh, with Biggie, uh, he's doing it, you know, talking about America like that. I got to say kudos to Biggie on that. A lot of people saying he didn't have the mic skills to do it. I think, Lance, that he proved them wrong last night. Yeah, and I have one thing for Mr. Sandow. Since you want to be like our uh, 16th president, here's to you. Okay. Gunshot. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't hear it at first. <sighs> Oh yeah, we can hear it a little bit. Yeah, but uh, well, anyway, let's go to the main event of Monday Night Raw, which was basically a rematch from Friday Night SmackDown, the four-on-three handicap match with Roman Reigns, Sheamus, and John Cena taking on Bray Wyatt, Cesaro, Alberto Del Rio, and Randy Orton. The matchup kind of went the way I thought it was going to do. You know, we're going to see a lot of the the signature moves, and, uh, and to all the Cena haters out there. Cena did not kick out at two, 
he wasn't even involved in the pinfall. Um, because I know a lot of people out there, oh, Cena's always kicking out at two, then he wins the match. Well, it didn't go that way, so keep your mouth shut, haters. Uh, um, it turned out with Sheamus hitting the bro kick on Cesaro to pick up the victory, then what we kind of expected to happen, happened. Kane's pyro hits, comes out, attacks Cena, Sheamus, and Roman Reigns, and then Triple H reveals Kane to be the eighth participant in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank ladder match. And just as Kane did his ring pyro move with his arms, out comes Roman Reigns with a spear and spears the demon. And we kind of leave off Monday Night Raw like that. James, I'm going to ask you, you know, we, we talked a little bit about it before we started recording this review. Um, I figured you would want to touch on a little bit more. Not a lot of people were surprised that Triple H added Kane into this match. Um, well, that's your thing, though, really, is that the fact that Kane is technically was supposed to be involved with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match against Dan Bryan had Dan Bryan not been injured. And I think this is the way to give, you know, Kane another chance at the title to help with the authority also is that basically the authority gets two chances at the title that's Rainy Orn and Kane to get the title back to the authority's way. Basically. And, and if they don't get it done, they, they can, uh, if, if Seth Rollins, if they put the uh, Money in the Bank briefcase on Seth Rollins, they could uh, use him to get the title back to the authority. You know, they could, use, they could play that angle up for that. But um, so on the, on that note, guys. Um, sorry, no Facebook fan reviews. But whenever we get Facebook fan reviews from Facebook.com/slash/wgstv, we will always read them out loud right here on the official review. So with that being said, it is now time to go into overall scores and our picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw this week being the go home show to Money in the Bank. You know, we needed to have the big reveal as to who was going to be involved in the Money in the Bank contract match, and we did get that, of course, with the added uh, Dean Ambrose into it, so really should be interesting to see where, where they go with that one. Uh, the Intercontinental Championship match, I'm going to tell you right now, hands down, it's going to get best match of the night. Um, I was thoroughly entertained. It was a great match. Uh, worst segment of the evening, um, it's going to be a tie between seeing the Damian Sandow identity crisis continue and a combination of seeing both Vicky Guerrero and Stephanie McMahon covered in mud. Uh, I'm going to give a big honorable mention to the main event, you know, just based on the fact that, you know, it's for the WWE World of Championship Money in the Bank ladder match, and, you know, we finally get the eighth participant, and so now it's official. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see, uh, again, who gets it? It's going to be really hard when, when I finally get around to doing another predictions video. You know, I'll put that in quotation marks because I keep saying I'll do a predictions video and then, to, you know, the time just, you know, slips away from me and I end up not doing it. But I'm going to attempt, uh, right? I'm going to attempt to do a predictions video. And when we do one, it's really going to be hard to tell me because there's eight guys in that match. So it's really, a, you know, we all, we all got like a one in eight shot of getting it right. So. But um, I gotta say that the go home show was all right. You know, it wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't terrible like Impact Wrestling was last week. But um, uh, I gotta say it was a really good, entertaining show. Um, I gotta give it a three out of five. Let's go to Lance next. Get his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Lance, best match. Well, overall, I'll give it a 3.5. It was pretty good to me. Best match, I, I gotta get. I'm with you, uh, uh, Ziggler and uh, Sand. I mean Bar Barrett. Barrett, yeah. Worst seg. Worst match. The uh, Divas match. The non uh, Stephanie Vicky match. Uh huh. And the best segment is a tie. Between when you wish upon a star, and I'm the normal one, and and <laughs> Vicky and Stephanie both getting in mud. Okay, 
Uh, <laughs> flopping around like nobody's been trying to everybody falling, the ref even getting dirt muddy. That's hilarious to me. Did, did Stephanie actually dog paddle out of the mud? Or, I think. <laughs> All I know is she pulled a ref in too. <laughs> like, come in and join us. It's fine. Uh, oh, man. Uh, so, talking about someone who's probably used to that. James. Over to you with your overall <laughs> score and your picks for best and worst match. Or, I don't even know what I meant by that. Match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. That's I give Raw a three out of five. I feel like it should have been. It could have been better, but I'm gonna. I'd be. Uh, I'd be given. Giving that it's score for them. Uh, best match has to be IC title match because really. I feel like this could help the I the IC title because we know how we all know the Intercontinental Championship usually is Just get almost up there with the WWE Championship, and they've been always have great matches, and this is one of the good matches they had in a while for the with the Intercontinental Championship. The worst match has to be Damian Sano and Biggie. Why? Just why? Because it was I'm... four score and seven years ago. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I broke James on that one. <laughs> anyway, honorable mention has to go with Vicky doing the Eddie Guerrero dance at the end. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, and like I said, it was a big send off in my opinion for her, and and the, and especially the Guerrero family name. You know, when was really the last solid time we've heard not only uh, you know, chanting for the Guerrero family name, but you know Eddie Guerrero actually being referenced in the WWE in an actual promo and segment in the ring. So well, I gotta I'm, say, I'm also gonna ask, when's the last time we even get Vicky Guerrero get cheered? Uh, yeah, yeah. never. Exactly. Exactly. So on that note, guys and gals, what we want to know now from you guys out there, yes, you guys watching this right now, the viewers and subscribers of WGS TV is, what are your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week? What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw? Your thoughts on the send-off for Vicky Guerrero? Your thoughts about Kane being added? into the WWE World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank ladder match. And your thoughts on the participants in the Money in the Bank contract match. If you, if you want, I'll quickly rev... Not that you've ever afforded us that type of luxury. Anyway, if you could tell Clementine, we would appreciate it. So really quickly, he Dolph Ziggler, Rob Van Dam, Bad News Barrett, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. Your thoughts on those people being in the traditional Money in the Bank ladder match. We definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV? Album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, redneck woman cooking videos, and a bunch of other like uh, guitar equipment reviews. And if you hadn't subscribed, why hadn't you? Ladies and gentlemen, when he believes he wants to wish upon a star, it's James from the Big Easy. James, you got anything coming up for the Houdat Temple? Uh, I sent a duck your way. <laughs> no, 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 not, you can't do not, it. not, you can't not do your anymore. I can't do Axana, but I can get a swarm of ducks for you. Why well, can't he? She's unemployed right now. We could get it. We could get it for the uh, for uh, Miss. Uh, Don't say MSX. Don't say. It. <laughs> I could say that. I could say that. But anyway, um, World Cup time. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, find us at iVlog.tv slash user slash platform five four. Fans, don't forget to like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGSTV. Don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash ZFXTV Network. On a side note, ladies and gentlemen, MSX Hell Frozen Over will be coming. The rest of it will be coming very soon. You know, it's, it's just a process of having to redo the commentary and the graphics and everything like that. Because uh, usually when I when I go to the shows, I do commentary live over there. So, But due to the fact that that night my voice... Let's just say this: uh, I was doing my best and worst impersonation of John Laurinaitis. You know, 
People power. Thanks a lot, James. But the rest of Hell Frozen Over will be coming, and soon after that, ladies and gentlemen, MSX Revelations will be here uh, on the air, right here on WGS TV. Just what happened with Ashton Spears and Shane Douglas? The only way to find out is to stay tuned right here to WGS TV to find out what happens. So, on that note, guys, don't, like I said before, don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer, youtube.com slash ZFX TV Network if you haven't already. So, for the incomparable Lance Moss from Lance Moss TV and the the wonderful believer James from the Big Easy, I'm the Russell Gamer, Double B, Billy Boudreau, saying bye, Vicky. We'll miss you. You know, I'm gonna my power, people power. We gonna send a duck right to Billy. It'll be at the next show. Just for him. But maybe can't really afford to do that now. This seems like. <laughs>